Hello, how's everybody doing today? And I uh, just want to uh, thank you guys for joining in with us. Um, I have with me today, I have the pleasure of having, they call her the bot queen. Um, she kind of, I guess, excel, uh, accelerated her um, agency and grew pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and um, you know, you guys, if you're joining us now, hashtag live, if you're on live, hashtag replay, if you're on the replay. And um, just to, um, the reason why we say this is, you know, just to get this out, because obviously, you know, we have somebody, you know, very special on the show today, you know, just <laughs> pretty much, you know, somebody famous, you know. So, um, you know, if you heard anything about Mini Chat, if you know anything about Mini Chat, she actually spoke at the uh, Mini Chat conference. And she's actually today going to just let you know how she transitioned into bots, um, um, and, you know, just let us know, you know, what, it, you know, some people may not even know what a bot is, but actually, I guess we can just start out just by um, telling your um, story and how you got started. So, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is a real great pleasure. I hope that uh, what I have to share will help at least one person. Um, but yeah, so my background is I am not a typical marketer. Um, my background is actually as a clinically certified cytogeneticist. I have my bachelor's degree in biology and I was analyzing chromosomes underneath a microscope for about 11 years. And that's what I thought I was going to do for my career that I was going to work at and um, retire from. And then there was, you know, corporate issues. Uh, we were losing clients and there's talks about layoffs and that was kind of a wake up call plus. Um, I have three kids, and so, you know, I was working opposite schedules with my husband. He was working Monday through Thursday, and I was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and working three tens, and so I was, we never had a day off together, and we could never as a family just, you know, take a weekend to go to the lake or just do anything fun in the summer. It always had to be, like, pre-planned out uh, way in advance because you have to ask for time off, so there was a lot of different things that were kind of adding up, and I was like, you know, there's got to be something else I can do because I didn't... I wasn't being fulfilled with my job and I mean, it was interesting, but I just, I started dreading it. And so I started looking into what I could do online and it was back in the summer of 2016 that I was like, you know, maybe I can start running Facebook ads for businesses. I was listening to some podcasts uh, like Perpetual Traffic and uh, Amy Porterfield and some others. And I was like, you know, I can do this whole Facebook ads thing. So um, I actually decided in September, of 2016 to purchase Dan Henry's Facebook ads course and that in itself was a big uh, accomplishment because um, about a year before that uh, for a year and a half my husband was laid off from work and so we were just surviving off of my one income and so we racked up a lot of debt so I didn't have you know a thousand bucks just lying around to buy Dan Henry's course uh, so thanks to PayPal credit I was able to purchase that course and that's what jumped me into this whole digital marketing realm and so I started that and I wasn't, you know, my background's in science. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a marketer. Um, so it wasn't like quick and easy, like, oh yeah, in two weeks I got like 10 clients and I was hitting 10K a month. It probably was not like that. Um, I struggled getting clients at first. Um, took like three or four months before I got my first actual paying client. And he was kind of crazy and psycho, um, <laughs> literally. Um, and it was like the worst client experience ever. It's like you hear about these bad client stories, like he's like at the top. And uh, so then ended up stopped working with him because he stopped paying my invoice. And so I was like, okay, I need to find something else. I'm like, this sucks. I'm working my digital marketing agency alongside, uh, you know, my full-time job. And so I really was like, man, is this going to actually work? You know, I, I know it'll work, but it's not seeming to work for me. And then it was in about April of 2017 that I really started learning about messenger bots. And I had heard about them. I was like, okay, I need to get into these things. And take some time to learn about them. So I kind of just dove in and they had only been around for about a year at that point. And so the functionality and um, abilities of the bot weren't as robust as they are now, but they were still pretty good. And so I jumped in and I ended up getting a local restaurant client. Um, I actually pitched them. Um, it was going to be 500 bucks a month for bots and ads. And he told me he couldn't he wouldn't be able to pay 500 a month. The most he'd ever spent was like $150 on a uh, magazine article ad. And so we ended up coming down to a compromise of $300 plus free food. <laughs> I was like, hey, that works. Um, and actually it was really great because um, he was my first client that I'd used bots for and I did a giveaway uh, using messenger marketing and it just blew up. It was amazing results. It was so great. It got written up in the ManyChat blog. Um, I posted the results in some places and got 
you know, a lot of feedback and actually got a number of clients from it. And then since then, I've just focused just on marketing into bots and sending traffic into bots and getting great results. And, um, you know, I, like Mike was saying, I've, you know, since then been able to speak on stage at Manchat's conference. I've spoken on stage at other masterminds, including the Digital Marketer War Room Mastermind, and um, just really have gotten great results for a lot of different businesses using Messenger bots. And um, it's been about a year and a half since I've even created a uh, ClickFunnels landing page. <laughs> so I've done whole transition my whole marketing agency into Messenger and it's been pretty amazing and now with the abilities that there are with ManyChat um, it's like leaps and bounds better than even what I started with so it's super exciting to see you know where I've come and where the uh, industry's come in the last you know couple of years but I think the best part though is um, actually 10 days from now it'll be a year that I put in my two weeks notice for my job so I've been I quit my job uh, about you know a year ago and it's been it was scary at first because I was like oh my gosh this safety net of you know insurance and what if this thing doesn't work out that I had you know this job to fall back on and so I finally cut all the ties mainly because I'd asked for my daughter's birthday off uh, six days beforehand we had to switch around her birthday party and uh, they told me that I'd be written up for it and I'm just like you're kidding me right like this is ridiculous this is final straw and at this point, I was making 10K a month, you know, and so I really didn't need the job. I was kind of like more just doing it just to kind of help them out and, you know, just because I didn't want to get rid of it. And so it was, that was the final straw. I went to the store, uh, got a sorry for your loss card and wrote my resignation letter on the other side of it and then <laughs> turned it in with my badge. And that's the last time I've been there. So uh, it's been full circle. It's been awesome. And um, like I said, it's just going to keep going up from here. I'm pretty excited for the industry. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good introduction to uh, you know your story and your, your full circle going all the way around. But um, actually, there's something I want to touch on. I guess uh, the reason why, well, actually, I met her at the Mini Chat conference. That's where we were on the post that you saw on my um, page. You know, you guys were you, you guys. Yeah. Like and, um, not the Mini Chat shot. Not the Mini Chat conference. JR's. JR's conference. And uh, we met um, actually in Atlanta. And. Um, I guess the thing that stood out was, you know, it's like, she's a, you know, she used to work in the lab and I was like, what? And then you just told me, I didn't know your major was biology, but that was my major as well. But I guess the situation that I'm running into is kind of like you, you know, I'm not really, you know, a big salesperson. Actually, I guess I started out in sales, like my first job out of college, because I really couldn't find any lab jobs or anything. I was applying everywhere and yeah. the money quick, even though I was still at home with mom and dad. But the thing was, you know, I, um, I started a sales job and I was actually selling vacuum, vacuum cleaners. And Oh wow! Uh, I actually kind of got suckered into that because I saw an ad in the paper and it, it was very ambiguous as far as how and uh, what I would be doing. So I showed up and then I guess apparently they kind of eliminated, maybe like 30 or 40 people eliminated. And somehow I made it through the trial, like I made it after lunch. So I got invited back after lunch and I was like, wow, why did I get invited back? Anyway, so we we're selling these <laughs> uh, vacuum cleaners and I was like, I don't think there's jobs for me. So I quit after a week and I didn't have a job anywhere. I think I ended up going to a steel company, but then I kind of ended up getting lab jobs and that's where I've been ever since for like 15 years. But the thing is, you know, as far as being a, you know, a lab person, I mean, and not having any background in sales, I mean, how did you, I guess, develop into that? Because I mean, a lot of people are going to say that, you know, especially starting out, you know, in the social media, it's like, hey, I want to get involved in social media. I want to do this. I see a lot of people, you know, making a lot of money and they're helping a lot of businesses. Because, um, but I mean, my my situation right now is the fact that, you know, I'm just so isolated and, uh, you know, going to a lab. Because I mean, obviously you look at a microscope. So I'm not, you know, I, I really, I mean, I'm, doing, I'm running around, doing, running on different instruments. But the thing is, you know, it's pretty much working in a lab is just isolation. I mean, and I'm an introvert at heart. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one reason why I picked, you know, the lab job. And then I think you said you work the weekends. I used to work the weekends. So, I mean, it's, you know. And, and I used to work weekend. nights too. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Because there's really nobody there. That's the whole point of picking the weekends, you know. So, I mean, how did you, I guess, transition from, I guess, the uh, isolation factor of your personality, because pretty much you're stepping outside of your personality. So how did you, um, I guess, transition from that into just being an extrovert, going out and speaking to different business owners and stuff? Well, actually, I think um, I am actually an extrovert at heart. I think I've always been an extrovert um, for the most part. Um, I was the ASB treasurer in my high school. I'd talk in front of my you know, high school, you know, hundreds of people making a fool out of myself on the gym floor doing dumb stuff. <laughs> and just you know I was I've always been kind of outgoing like that but 
yes, the lab and you get into it. And I was in it for what, 10, 11 years. So I started getting used to that, you know, yeah, you're just kind of seeing the same people every time. And you just sit at the microscope or you sit in the lab, you're doing, you know, sample processing and you're kind of by yourself. But what I did was I maximized my time that I was there. And I started to think about it, that the job was paying me to get out of it by the fact that I was listening to podcasts. I was listening to books on tape, sales books. I was listening to um, like the book, Never Split the Difference. That was huge. Um, and uh, just a bunch of different audio stuff that I could sit there because I'm all there you know, by myself in terms of I don't have to necessarily be speaking with customers or anything that I could just be sitting there listening and absorbing a lot of this stuff. And like I said, it wasn't easy for me to get clients or to sell or anything like that. And it still really isn't. It's just, I also look at my marketing business as like an experiment in a good way, like, um, but using the scientific method where you know, I change a variable once, you know, one variable at a time. And then I adjust based off of those results and something that's worked well, I'd say, okay, I'm going to keep trying that and see if that's consistent. You know, I keep getting the same results, you know, the whole uh, testing and experiment to make sure you're getting repeatable results. And then, um, if something's not working, I just make an adjustment and then learn from there. So then that way, um, I'm always learning, even if it's a horrible experience or, you know, um, like I had this dentist client, I got her 45 leads in a month. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. She's paying me 2,500 a month. And I sent her my invoice for the next month and she was saying she didn't want to continue. I'm like, whoa, like what is going on? Like, is this like opposite world? Like opposite day? What? Yeah, I was blown away. I was not expecting that. And she said, well, nobody came in. And I was like, well, did your front desk person follow up with them? And come to find out, oh, the front desk person went on vacation. They didn't follow up with any of these people. They were just assuming that these people are going to be coming in and uh, scheduling appointments. And I said, no, I told you you had to follow up with them. So that was a wake up call to me. I'm like, okay, learning experience. Now, anytime I have a new client, I'm going to be very adamant that they need to be following up. And, and then I'm going to follow up with them to make sure that they're following up with their leads. Um, it's crazy, you know, but... It, just a learning experience. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that again, or I'm going to make it better next time. Um, and then in terms of me just reaching out to people and, um, and also pitching people when they, you know, want to work with me, I, you know, kind of keep things consistently of what I say, but you know, then I make some adjustments here and there. And if somebody, you know, says, yeah, like right away, I'm like, okay, my price was too low or okay. I, you know, really oversell sold that. And it was a great price. So I need to duplicate that. So um, it's all been a learning process for sure. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. That's a, a good story. I see that, um, you know, if you guys are, I see there's a, actually one person on now, my wife. So uh, she's on here. So if you're getting any value out of this, just, uh, you know, ha I actually just put a number in the box. Put the number one if you're uh, getting value in this. But um, I know I'm going to broadcast this out probably to my um, my page. But right now I'm live in my group. But um, the thing is, you know, as far as um, that's interesting, you said, you know, the way you run ads or run box, you know, as far as just um, the scientific method, because um, I guess everybody knows Ty Lopez, actually his business partner, Alex Muir, pretty much does the same thing. I'm actually in a course of his and uh, it's interesting how he um, thinks about running ads and building campaigns and stuff and how he, I guess, you know, he actually uses the scientific method because I think he was like a, a, NASA, a NASA scientist or something like that. But I mean, he pretty much uh, every campaign, he has a hypothesis at the beginning and then he was like, you know, this is an educated guess hypothesis. And if that works, he continues on from there. So, I mean, it's pretty interesting that you said, that, especially having a science background and, um, you know, I'm trying to pretty much do the same thing, but right now actually, um, I guess, I guess this kind of leads me to my next question as far as how did you scale so fast? Cause I've had a couple of, um, you know, clients that, you know, I, I did free trials for them. And the thing was, you know, they really, I mean, I spent a lot of time doing that. It's like, there's no way this is just one client that I'm working with. I'm spending a lot of time. It's like, I'm going to have to develop a team. So unfortunately, you know, I do have a, actually a team that um, actually help find leads, prospect leads, and I actually have a closing team. And on the back end, I actually have somebody wow. to service my ad. So, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, it's just, you know, pretty much amazing that, you know, I kind of kind of full circle already and I've only been maybe in the industry six. Yeah. Years. But the thing is, I'm just trying to find, you know, the clients. But here lately, 
Um, I'm thinking some big things are going to uh, happen within the next few months because um, I just actually got the calling service. But the thing is, how did you scale so fast? Because obviously, I mean, to build a bot, I've actually tried. I've used ManyChat and uh, one other um, software program. And um, the thing is, um, it takes a while to build a bot. And I mean, it, I mean, you got you really got to think about, you know, who's engaging because you can't see the people. And you're not really interacting with them. It's like, you know, you got to kind of think on both sides. It's like, well, if I put this how are they going to respond? And then if I put that or what should I do? Cause I'm not talking to them. You don't know. So it's like, you're trying to, I guess, uh, predict, you know, what's the best method, but I know you said you kind of test and stuff. And, but I mean, how did you, well, I guess I asked it, you know, pretty much I asked you about five or six questions there, but I guess the first thing is, <laughs> I guess your team, let's start with your team first. So how did you um, develop your, um, your team as far as, cause I guess. It's just you know, me. I don't have a team. It's you just still me. don't have a team. Really? No, I don't. Actually, I'm, I'm just now getting somebody locally who's another scientist, getting her uh, up to speed on learning bots. But yeah, up till now, it's just been me. So wow. um, <laughs> I don't know how I do it either. I mean, I spend a lot of time in front of my computer, um, but the trade-off is I can, you know, take my kids to school. I can pick them up from school. I can take my daughter to gymnastics class. I can go work out three times a week, you know, in the middle of the day, things like that. But I'm, yeah, I'm constantly in front of my computer. But the thing with bots is once you build one and it's a, a decent one, you can use it as at least a framework for other clients. So one benefit um, that I don't get to um, have, in, I don't have an example of because I don't niche down because I have so many people coming to me now just because I've, I'm so well known, but in so many different industries. But once you like, if you niche down, you can pretty much take one bot that you've built for one client, just put it onto another one and then just change up, you know, like the contact information or you know maybe the offer or something like that but if you use like a um a baseline or a foundational bot then you know all that time and effort you put into building it that one time and also the time and effort put into optimizing it you can then you know take that and put it into another one and then you don't have to really do a whole lot with it um one thing is like with that restaurant client i started uh november 5th of 2017 so a year or what 25 months ago started a birthday ad campaign for a free meal during their birthday. I have not touched that ad or that bot since I created it. It's been running in the background, getting bot subscribers. And with that client, for example, I maybe do, you know, I'm in his account or his ad or, you know, that, that's pretty much the only campaign I'm running. And um, I'm in there like maybe two, three hours a month, maybe. So I don't spend a lot of time, you know, with that, but you know, every now and then I do some extra, you know, every couple of months do another promotion or whatever for them. Um, but then I have other clients like e-commerce clients. They are like attention whores almost. Like It's like yeah. daily I'm getting messages. I'm like, what the heck? Like I want more of these restaurant clients where I don't have to do much. I yeah, get that, them results, right? It's all about yeah. getting the results. Yeah, that was my client. I just, yeah. was e-commerce. So I was spending a lot of time with him. So no. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work. I've come to find out, and you know, especially um, with Amazon clients where you can't use the pixel to do retargeting necessarily, and um, then you're always having to like change up and do a new offer to try and help ranking with Amazon. Those clients just are like a time suck. So um, I really do like some of these uh, brick and mortar stores, uh, you know, businesses just because they're. Um, the promotions are, are set pretty much for, you know, once every few months, or you can have like one, like the birthday one that's running in the background constantly. You don't even have to do anything about it. So um, I definitely have different clients that have different time requirements. And so because if I had, you know, all e-commerce clients, I would be, I would be in a nut house right now. <laughs> time I'd have to spend with them. So luckily that's not the case. <laughs> And yeah, see, I guess that was my mistake because you were talking about Amazon and um, actually that was my client. So I was actually trying to take his traffic from Amazon and uh, build him a bot out on, uh, well, I did build him a bot from Facebook. So what I was doing was I was using um, M.M.E. link and I was transferring all those people over. But the thing was, I was trying to get him to put a scan code on his, um, like his uh, shipping and stuff. I don't know. Everybody out there may not understand what we're talking about, but if you start digging and researching and Googling, you'll find out. But anyway, I tried to get him to put a scan code on every product that he said, you know, um, yeah. sent out. 
And uh, he was like, well, you know, we're eventually going to do that. And I mean, I got him maybe about 100 subscribers in about two weeks on a low ad spend, like maybe $25 a day or something. So and then it was just, uh, you know, a regular um, uh, book bag niche. But the thing is, I was spending so much time. So I guess let's talk about because that was the thing that, you know, I was uh, I actually still am fearful of. That's why I pretty much developed the team. I didn't want to move from a job to another job because I didn't want to be isolated. You know, I mean, yeah, you're, yeah, you know, I, I want to go home, spend time with my family and stuff, but I don't want to, you know, just be isolated you know because i mean pretty much you know if i'm locked in my computer then to me it's still you know just like a job so i mean how do you i guess i mean especially because i know you got your kids and stuff they're like well i gotta finish this campaign so i mean how do you i guess uh, associate with that or differentiate with that or you just isolate i mean do you have a specific time that you work and um you say after this hour i'm going to cut it off or only work between you know this time and that time or how does that work for you for me, um, currently, and this is also why I am bringing on somebody and I'm training them and uh, to have some of the off, you know, offloading. But um, for me, it's, you know, I don't start my day until after I've taken my two oldest kids to school. And then um, if it's uh, Monday, Wednesday or Friday, then right after I take them to school, I go and work out for like two hours total, right? So it's like I leave the house for like two hours until I get back. And so then that's when my day starts. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like, you know, depending on what's going on, I try and, you know, schedule my work around it. But I think the other big benefit for me is I, I told my husband, you know, when I'm like quitting, like, but I do need at least one day, zero distraction. And so I actually have a, a co-working space that I rent. And every Saturday I go there for eight to nine hours, just sit there and just bust out a bunch of stuff um, with zero distractions because I've come to realize, and, and that's the other thing, when you start to work for yourself, you have to figure out how to get stuff done and what works best for you. And I've come to figure out that when I get distracted by, you know, my kids or I have to go do something, it takes me a while to get back and get refocused. I know a lot of people have that issue too. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, help myself with uh, project management software to keep a list so that way I can look at the list and be like, oh yeah, that's what I need to be working on right now instead of just, you know, because I get, you know, 20 million distractions of notifications and messages and stuff all throughout the day. And so I'm trying to, you know, keep track of everything and still focus on what I'm working on. So um having that project management software really does help and also having that one day a week that i'm just like focused and like i'm going and having zero distractions and just busting out you know my list of things i need to get done yeah that's um that's good because i know a lot of especially entrepreneurs and stuff starting out you know they have trouble even you know seasoned entrepreneurs they have issues with um you know time management and um, everything like that. So um, I guess this kind of, I guess, tones it down a little bit. I mean, some people think this is a hard question. This is my last question I'm gonna ask you. Um, but um, I guess I pretty much ask everybody that comes on and I interview, it's like, if you were to have one superpower, what would it be and why? Um, if I had one superpower, it would be to pause time. So then, except for my time, so then I had more time to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would probably be my main thing right now anyways is yeah because my time is super limited so um, I I make the most out of it and make the most efficient you know use of it as possible but um, but besides that you know it's I think um, uh, let's see what would be another one um, besides pausing time um, be able to um, duplicate myself, I guess. That would be another way that would save me more time. It'd be able, you know, have myself to be able to have a clone of that can do more work. So, although I have been um, also utilizing my kids. So, <laughs> um, I was, I had a comment ladder in my group for a uh, PDF I was giving away and I had people comment on it. And there is no way I could respond to all those comments with the link to go get the PDF. And so, I told my 10 year old, I said, hey, or 11 year old, I said, hey, I'll give you 10 bucks if you go through and you hit paste on all of these comments and, and paste the uh, link and he did it. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm using my kids as <laughs> workforce. All right, free labor. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm yeah. actually come to find out, I guess I can have that for tax purposes. I'm like, I need to find other things that I can get them to do. <laughs> well, actually, I guess just the point that I picked up from Cole Hatter, this has probably been, um, well, um, I guess uh, I was at a conference with he when he was there and actually he said what he does, he actually um, for, well, I don't know how, I don't know if I should say this on camera or off camera, but anyway, the thing is he actually takes his kids and puts them on his payroll. Um, he, I think he has two daughters yeah. and what he does is yep. he, um, he actually uses them as like photographers. So people take pictures of them, but then he pays them up to, I think like $12,000 or something each. So that's $24,000 mm -hmm. that he does not have to claim taxes on. So, I mean, he just saved. Exactly. Much 
taxes on that. So, I mean, that was a pretty, you know, interesting tip. So, but uh, how can people reach you? I mean, do you want to, um, I know that you have a couple of courses out there. I know you think you have a training program. Um, I think I've been getting messages from your, um, bot, uh, oh yeah, Orca Mar market Marketology. So is that, that the, um, is yeah, that Orca Marketology. So, um, yeah, so I mean, how can people reach you? Um, uh, is there a so yeah, so you can go through my bot um, at Orca Marketology. If you go m.me backslash and then Orca Marketology, um, it'll go through into my bot. But then also you can join my group Marketing with Messenger Bots. Um, that's where you know I post a ton of stuff and I've got a lot of uh, resources as well um, about bots and and ad campaigns and all that stuff. All right. Well, um, you heard it here, everybody. Just, um, you know, if you did find value, you know, if you're catching this on the replay or whatever, you find the value, just let us know. Um, reach out to uh, Mackenzie or myself. I'll get you in touch with her, you know, if you don't have anything. But what I'm going to do is she's going to send me a link. I'm going to put that in the comments, um, you know, once I um, repurpose this video and everything. This will also be live on, uh, well, not live, but it will be on YouTube. So you can uh, go watch it there because I think we have a little herky-jerky on uh, Facebook. I'm still trying to work out going through through three different um, software so um, right but, uh, yeah so I want to thank Mackenzie again because I know she's actually busy and I think she has like a training call in probably like two minutes now so we're gonna just go ahead and uh, rush off there but uh, I appreciate her coming on taking time out and um, really thanks thanks for the value and the knowledge that you dropped definitely definitely no problem and uh, yeah we'll uh, talk to you soon all right thanks bye okay no problem bye